Hello everyone, welcome back to Maker Mindset. This is the first video on a three-part series about firmware update, which is an essential component of your skill set if you are really serious about growing on your 3D printing abilities. So, let's begin. Until the middle of 2021, Creality was still selling printers with thermal runway protection disabled on their firmware. This poses an unacceptable fire risk. So, on the first part of this video, we are going to learn how to do a quick test on your printer to determine whether or not it has thermal runaway protection enabled on the firmware. But first, we need to understand what thermal runaway protection actually is. For this, we are going to have to take a closer look at the printer's hot end. First, we're going to have to talk a little bit about the heating element. This component receives electricity straight from the motherboard, and the more current it receives, the hotter it gets, which, in turn, raises the temperature of the entire heating block. Now, the little glass bulb there is called the thermistor. The job of the thermistor is to tell the motherboard what is the current temperature of the heating block. If for any reason the thermistor stops working and you don't have thermal runaway protection enabled on the firmware, the motherboard might think that the thermistor is saying, hey, it's still cool in here. So the motherboard will start raising the current that goes through the heating element. The heating element can reach such high temperatures that it can cause the heating block to crack open. And that could cause the heating element to fall on top of, for example, an unfinished printing job. And, as you can imagine, filament will be the perfect fuel to an auto-control fire. So, it should be our first priority to make sure that thermal runaway protection is enabled in our printer's firmware. So, to do this test, we will need to first unplug our printer. And you will need an old cell phone charger with a micro USB connector. This test should work with all Creality filament printers and clones from other brands. Our objective here is to power the motherboard through the USB connector. The display will be a little dim, but you should be able to navigate through the menu options. What we need here is to go to the main menu and select Control, Temperature, and raise the temperature of the nozzle to 200. Now the motherboard is going to start drawing more current from the cell phone charger and the display will grow even dimmer. In our little test here, the heating element is not going to receive enough current from the cell phone charger to heat up. In a few minutes, the motherboard is going to check on the thermistor to determine whether the heating block has reached the desired temperature at the allotted time. If the temperature of the heating block does not match what the motherboard expects it to be, the thermal runaway protection alarm will be triggered. However, if after 3 or 4 minutes you don't hear this alarm, it will mean that thermal runaway protection is disabled on your printer. Now, even if you have thermal runaway protection enabled, there are many other reasons why you would want to update the firmware on your printer. So, let's talk about those reasons on the second part of this video. Now, in order for us to do a firmware update, we will need to collect a little bit of information from the motherboard. But before we can continue, I would like to address a question that many of you may be asking. Well, I have thermal runaway protection enabled. Why should I bother doing firmware update right now? In the near future, we are going to go over several important upgrades such as filament runout sensor, automatic bed leveling, and even manual mesh bed leveling. These are just a few examples of upgrades that will require you to do a firmware update. So, why leave for tomorrow something that you can learn about today? Now, let's go back to the task at hand. We will start out by addressing a problem that was unnecessarily generated by Creality. I'm talking about the ever-changing and the 3 Pro. Creality, throughout the more than three years they have been producing the Ender 3 Pro printer, 
keeps changing the hardware that comes with the printer, but they don't tell the buyer what they are actually getting. Life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. So let me give you a quick rundown on the list of components that have been switched around since the original release of the Ender 3 Pro. Just don't quote me on the dates because they have been gathered from the community and not from any official source. But I will vouch for the accuracy on the list of components. So let's begin. The Ender 3 Pro was first released at the end of 2018 and it came with an 8-bit motherboard featuring Allegro A4988 stepper motor drivers, which are passable drivers. By the end of 2020, Creality began manufacturing the Ender 3 Pro with an upgraded 32-bit motherboard, still featuring the same Allegro A4988 stepper motor drivers, and also a clone stepper motor driver which is much worse and noisier. Originally, the 32-bit motherboard came with an ARM CPU featuring 512 kilobytes of memory. However, after January 22, they began shipping Ender 3 Pros, still with ARM CPUs, but now with only half of the memory. Now, this last hardware change will not affect the firmware update, but I just wanted to vent a little bit. One of the selling points of the Ender 3 Pro was that it came with a very reliable Meanwhile well power supply. However, after April 2022, Creality began shipping Ender 3 Pros with a new well certified Creality power supply, which is not even half as good. I am at a loss of words here. I wish I could say something to Creality that would make them stop doing this kind of stuff. Snap out of it! So that's the problem. In order for us to do a firmware update, we need to know exactly the kind of hardware we have. And because of all those changes, we won't be able to know what type of hardware we have unless we open up the printer and take a look around. And for this task, we'll only need the second smallest hex wrench from the ones that came with the printer. The first screw that we need to remove is this one here on top. It's a small screw. Now we should put a filament box next to the printer and lean it against it. Underneath the printer there are three more screws that we need to remove. Here is another small screw. This is the only longer screw. This is the last one, another small one. The cover has the fan attached to it, so try to avoid pulling on the wires. We did all this so that we can take a closer look at our motherboard and figure out what kind of hardware our Ender 3 printer came with. Let's do a little bit of movie magic and spin the video right side up. Here you can see the version of motherboard you have. Here you can either have the version 1.1.234 or 5, which will mean you have an 8-bit motherboard. In this specific case, this tutorial is not for you. I put a link on the description to a tutorial that will teach you how to do a firmware update on 8-bit motherboards. Here you can also have the version 4.2.2 or 4.2.7, which will mean that you have a 32-bit motherboard and so this tutorial will be tailor-made for you. Ok, you know the version of motherboard you have. Now you need to pick up a notepad and write that information down. Next, we need to figure out what type of CPU we have. You will have to take a look at the last four digits of the CPU model number. Here, if you see the digits RET6 or the variation VET6, 
it will mean that you have an ARM 32-bit CPU with 512 kilobytes of memory. On the other hand, if you see an RCT6, that will mean that you have an ARM 32-bit CPU with only 256K of memory. Now, you need to write down on your notepad these last four digits of your CPU model number. Now, finally, we need to figure out what type of stepper motor drivers we have. The information that we need is written on the microchips hidden underneath those four black heat sinks. By the letters X, Y, Z and E printed on the motherboard, we can figure out what driver is associated with each of the four stepper motors. On more recent printers, Creality is been writing a letter on top of the SD card reader, which indicates what type of stepper motors the motherboard comes with. But if you don't see a letter there, then you're gonna have to do it the hard way. You're gonna have to remove one of the black heat sinks, clean up the microchip, write down the microchip model number that you will see there, then you will have to replace the heat sink with a little bit of thermal paste, but if you don't have thermal paste, a little bit of crazy glue can do the trick. Once you have figured what type of stepper motors you have, you need to write down that information on your notepad. We are finally done here. Now we need to put the cover back while making sure that we are not pinching any wire and also making sure that the fan can spin freely. Now you can put the screws back, but don't tighten them too much right now. First we should put all three screws back into place. Remember, the only longest screw goes here. This one is also small. And now it's time to tighten things up. The only screw that you need to be careful not to tighten too much is the longer screw because you are tightening steel screw against aluminum threads. The smaller ones are still on steel. Don't forget about this last screw which will be a small one. This is it, we are done with the hardware part of this project. That's it for now. Next week we are going to download the Marlin files. And then we are going to install Microsoft VS Code. So now, go down in the comment section and drop a little note. I love to read your feedbacks, your suggestions, and some of you made a couple of corrections that were very helpful. If you want to support the channel, now we have a Patreon account. The link is in the description. And don't forget to leave your likes. They are very important for the channel. And I want to ask you a favor. Please, please, please don't forget to subscribe. This channel cannot be monetized until it reaches 1000 subscribers. Here is the registration button. If you want to watch the rest of this series, you can click on this link here on the top and at the bottom you have a video that the YouTube algorithm thinks will be the best fit for you. So bye bye now.